Welcome back to the channel guys and today's video I'm going to be showing you guys five tactical mistakes that you guys might be making without even realizing it. Let's do it. The first thing we're going to be talking about today is tempo and tempo is one of the most important things in your entire tactic and a lot of people just put tempo as extremely high and sort of leave it as that because they think that is the best thing to do. Now in certain tactics in certain situations that is the best thing to do but an FM everything can work if you get it right. It's a mistake that people make because they'll be struggling to play against a team that's near the bottom of the league and they'll increase their tempo when actually they should be decreasing their tempo. The reason for that is if you lower your tempo, your players will obviously take a lot more time on the ball. They'll progress with the ball more slowly as a team. And when then what happens is if you lose the ball in the final third, your defenders and your midfielders will actually be in a position to be up the pitch and actually be able to counter press and press effectively. If you higher your tempo and have it really high, what will happen is your defenders will smash it to your midfielders, to your strikers really fast and your whole team as a structure won't be able to get up the pitch so you'll be pressing in little areas and they'll not be backed up by another person and you'll just get counter-attacked and pass through. So, if you're struggling against a team near the bottom of the league or even if you're just struggling to break down anyone, actually... Think about maybe lowering your tempo if you're the better team because what will happen, like I said, just more patience. You'll drag people out um, and then you'll become a domino effect and then another person will be out of the position and then the next person will come out of position and actually you'll get create better, higher quality chances if you actually lower your tempo. So just give it a go and let me know how you get on because it's something I've had a really, really big success with. The second mistake that you guys might be making is when you are clicking overlap left and overlap right. A lot of people think overlap left and overlap right is going to make your fullbacks or your wingbacks make more forward runs. It doesn't do that. It just means that your players in other areas are looking for the overlaps. So really, you should say look for overlap and look for overlap right, right? That's what they should say. It doesn't make your fullbacks bump the pitch. That is designed by your fullbacks duty and roll. So just keep that in mind because what happens if you're clicking attack it, uh, overlap left or overlap, overlap right and they're not making those really aggressive runs up the pitch, what will happen is your players inside those flanks on the left hand side and the right hand side will actually be holding onto the ball waiting for a run that's never going to come. So actually you might be slowing the play down in the final third and that's not a good thing because then other teams have a chance to get back in their blocks, back in their situations and then they can just counter attack you. So when you're clicking overlap left and right, just keep it in mind that if you don't couple that with a really aggressive roll like I've done, so for example, I'm over overlap left and on my left back, I have a wing back attack, right? On my right back, I have an inverted fullback. So I don't bother with overlap right because what will happen is Petkov, my right winger, he'll just be holding onto the ball or my uh, Volante in the right channel, Fuller Renusio, they'll just be holding onto the ball and there'll be no fullbacks making the run because he's an inverted wing back, a fullback. So just keep that in mind when you're clicking overlap left and overlap right. It even says it if you hover over it like this. It says, it instructs players on the left flank to hold onto the ball and look for an overlapping player in support, most likely a marauding fullback. But like I said, if your duty and role doesn't match that and they're not making those role runs, then your players won't be able to find them. So they're just looking for it. It doesn't make your fullbacks actually do it. Another tactical mistake that you guys might be making without realizing it is having counter-attack on. A lot of people will put counter-attack on every single tactic because they want to counter-attack. I don't have counter-attack on, and I'll tell you firsthand that my team still counter-attack. If they deem it is the correct thing to do, they will still counter-attack. All that counter-attack means is they will do it more often, if not every single time. If you hover over it, it literally says, it will ask players to immediately go on the attack and seek to take advantage of any opportunities left by the dispossessed opponents. So... I'm going to put a theory to you guys, and if it rings true, then consider changing this in your tactics. If you're just promoted, for example, and you have started the season really well, and you've got counter-attack on your tactic, and you've just come up from the Championship into the Premier League, for an example, and after halfway through the season, you're top six or top eight, right? That's happened to a lot of people. We've all done that. But second half of the season, you guys start to struggle, and you're not understanding why. Now, a lot of people think that is the AI figuring out your tactic. It's actually not true. All that happens is that when you play the first round of games, the first half of the season, and you're doing really well, when you come to the second half of the season, the teams below you will now be taking you more seriously. So whereas other people, in the first half of the season, they had their defensive line up here. So when you were counter-attacking, you were counter-attacking over the top of that line because they had spacing behind. Now, they're, they're defending here. 
So now you don't have the space in behind. So what you're doing is you're counter-attacking into defenders that are already stood there expecting it. So they're just heading the ball out and counter-attacking you. So consider if that starts to happen and you guys don't understand what's happened in your tactic, just take counter-attack off. Trust me, I've saved so many seasons of my own now to know that it's definitely something to do with counter-attack. Like I said, your players will still counter-attack. Don't worry about that. It doesn't mean they'll never do it. Uh, even in hold shape, by the way, even in hold shape, they will still counter-attack. It just means it's less often. So, like, if you're a highly possession system like uh, Man City, you would hold shape. But I'm just letting the team do both. Sometimes my team does hold shape. Sometimes they counter-attack. I let them decide which one to do. But like I said, if you've had that situation and your season has gone downhill... Just consider taking counter-attack off. I'm not saying it'll just fix every single problem magically, but you might see actually that it'll be better because your team then, and it links into tempo as my first tip, your team will start playing with the ball a bit more conservatively and actually dragging teams out rather than just spamming the ball over the top or through balls and defenders are just stood there cutting it out, right? So just consider that as something that you might want to do the next time that happens in your save. The next mistake you might be making without even realising it is when you're playing big teams, you might be having your players way too far apart. And what I mean by that is attacking width. If you're playing against a Man City or a Bayern Munich or a Real Madrid, a really good pressing teams, you might want to make your attacking width a bit more narrower. If you're playing against a top team, and your players are too far apart, they're going to get swamped because it's a lot further distance between the next player than if you was narrower. If they're narrower, they're all together. It has two benefits. The first benefit, they can find each other and the shorter the passing, the less risk and the less error. And the other thing is when you lose the ball, your players will be closer together so they'll actually be able to press a lot more effectively. Now, again, if you're a really big club defending... Uh, being fairly wider is good because you'll have better dribblers, so they'll be able to dribble with more space. They'll be able to make better passes, so they'll be able to stretch other people's uh, teams up. But if you're a smaller team, or you're a newly promoted team, or you're expected to struggle, just think about, especially when you're playing the bigger teams, just having your attacking width on fairly narrow. It will just have them a bit closer together, and you'll be able to play through their press a little bit more. The second part to this, also as an extra tip, is lowering your defensive line. So... Lowering your defensive line gives you a bit more space when you get onto the ball to play through the press. If you have a high defensive line and you win the ball and your team decides to play back to your centre-backs, your centre-backs are going to be really high up the pitch and they're going to get pressed a lot easier. If you drop your defensive line just a little bit more, it gives your players a little bit more breathing room to actually play through the press. So you actually what you want is you want space vertically but horizontally in terms of the width you actually want to be a little bit more narrow, especially against the big teams, like I said. Just consider that when you're playing the next time you're playing a Man City or a Liverpool, and it actually might save your season. And the last tactical mistake that you might be doing without even realising is pressing way too aggressively. Now, I know it sounds obvious, but a lot of people just put their tactic in and they don't really consider changing it much, especially if everything changes. So different players, different leagues, different signings, different opposition, different managers... You have to obviously keep watching your games and taking into account what's happening. So what I like to do as a little tip to you guys is check where my wingers are pressing. It's, where, it's how I set my entire team press. And what I mean by that is if my right wing and left wing are pressing too much, it usually means that my team is pressing too much. Because what happens is those two go out and press the opposition foot centre-backs or whoever, they're going to pressing too much. And then everyone else has to come out of their positions to do that job that they should be doing, right? So in-game, keep an eye on where your wingers are pressing. If they're pressing too much, if you've got a good team and you can overpress, and it's that's absolutely fine. But if you're a team that's mid-table or uh, you're not as good as the other teams in the league, then just think about not overpressing in terms of where your wingers are. Now, obviously, there's another nine players or another eight outfield players on the pitch, so consider where those guys are pressing as well. But usually, if your wingers go out and press a stupid amount, then it just makes your centre midfielders have to come out, your fullbacks have to come out, and then eventually centre backs. So just have a look at that. There's three things you can do um, when you're pausing the game in certain moments to see who's overpressing. The first thing is obviously trigger press. You can take it down or up, depending on if they're not pressing enough or pressing too much. The second thing you can do is the block, right? You want either the mid, if, you, if they're pressing um, too early, you obviously want to go to a mid block. It's a bit less aggressive. 
But the third thing, and the thing I like to do, is you can go into each individual player instruction on the wingers or whoever, and you can edit and you can click less often. So it doesn't mess around with the other players in the team structure. They're pressing absolutely fine. But what you're noticing sometimes, especially with high wingers, is they're just pressing a little bit too aggressively and the ball's getting played around them and then it's a 2v1 on your flank. You don't need that. So just go into the opposition uh, player instructions and just take down their pressing. And honestly, you will see a lot more counter-attacks and a lot more p opportunities where the big team comes on to you and actually you win the ball in a good in a good area and actually counter-attack them and get some really good high-quality chances. And that is the five tactical mistakes that you guys might be avoiding without even realizing it. So if you like the video, hit the like on the bottom. If you like the channel, please hit a subscription. That would be fantastic. And until next time, I'll catch you then. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.